Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Rome. Christopher and I flew in yesterday afternoon and met up with our friends Brooklyn and Gavin who are joining us for this trip. They flew in from Charlotte, we flew in from Greece, and we met up here. And so we just spent the evening walking around, kind of getting the feel for the city. We had some amazing Italian dinner, pasta, of course, with a nice bottle of red wine. Italian food is one of my favorite cuisines, so the food is something that I'm really looking forward to just enjoying during this trip, but I'm also a big lover of history, so lots of amazing old things to see here too. And it is all of our first time in Italy, so I'm really excited just to be able to explore and to experience this country together. But right now we are on our way out the door because we have a full day of exploring ahead of us. We're going to visit the Colosseum, Palatine Hill, the Roman Forum, and I believe the Pantheon at least today. And as we go, we might tack on a few other things too. So it's going to be a busy one, but I am so, so excited. Before we do anything though, we haven't had breakfast or coffee yet. So I think we're going to try to find a little cafe to grab a bite to eat and something to drink. And then we're off to explore room. And this is going to be such a fun time. So if you haven't already, make sure to hit that subscribe button below and let's go. Just got our coffee and pastries for breakfast. Uh, this is Brooklyn and Gavin, by the way. Say hi. <laughs> and we are on our way to the Coliseum, walking up this cute little street to get there. And it is like, we're just like walking up to it with this amazing view of the Coliseum. And it's so cool, I'm so excited. Our first stop of the day was the Colosseum, and this was a really surreal experience for all of us because it's something that you learn about in history growing up, and so getting to be there in person and experience it for yourself was just so cool. And so we spent probably a couple of hours just wandering through the amphitheater and learning about its just incredible history. Especially as someone who grew up in Canada and the US, coming over to Europe and seeing these buildings that are thousands of years old, just so much older than the countries that I've ever lived in, it really is just mind blowing. But then after we finished with the Colosseum, we walked just a short ways away to the Roman Forum. This was kind of the hub of ancient Rome and you could definitely get that feeling. Wandering around, there are just temples and buildings all stacked on top of each other. And something that we discovered during this trip that helped us to learn so much more about the places we were visiting was the Rick Steves Europe Italy podcast. There are about hour long episodes that walked us through the Colosseum, the Roman Forum, and tons of other sites that we visited while we were in Italy. And they really helped us to appreciate and to learn more about the sites that we were visiting. Then by the time we wrapped up at Palantine Hill, it was getting late. So we decided to save the Pantheon for the next day. Okay, it is the next day really early in the morning. We had such a great time at the Colosseum, the Palatine Hill, and the Roman Forum yesterday. Today, hi Christopher, what are you doing? Um, today, we are up bright and early because we want to go see the Trevi Fountain again, the Spanish Steps, and then we also want to see the Pantheon today. And then later on this afternoon, we have a tour at the Sistine Chapel and Vatican City. So another pretty full day of touring, but from what I hear, the history is like the best part of Rome. So wanting to pack in as much as possible because tomorrow we head to Florence. So it's going to be another big, busy day, but a fun one. And yeah, I'm excited. Christopher, what was your favorite part of the Colosseum yesterday? I know, it was all really cool, just seeing all the ancient ruins. I think that just like everywhere. seeing, what was that street called? But um, basically like the main street in ancient Rome and just seeing all the ruins everywhere was just so cool. Yeah, awesome. Well, it's going to be a good day. Let's go ahead to the Trevi Fountain and then start our exploring. And our first stop of the day was the Trevi Fountain. It's a really gorgeous fountain that's absolutely massive, but can get pretty crowded if you go later in the day. So we wanted to hit it early. And actually it was so early when we visited that they were still cleaning out the coins from the previous day. But that's actually really cool and fun to watch. And then we made a quick stop for coffee and pastries before making our way over to the Spanish Steps. Then after that, we made the about 15 minute walk to the Pantheon. 
There was a pretty long line to get in, but fortunately it did move quite fast and the interior of the building did not disappoint. It was just as impressive as the outside. Then after a quick lunch break, we hopped in a taxi and drove to the Vatican. And for the Vatican, we actually decided to do a tour of the Vatican museums in the Sistine Chapel. And this is something that I didn't really have a ton of expectations going into, but the museums absolutely blew me away. The art and the history here are just absolutely incredible. And it was so cool getting to walk through rooms that were painted by Raphael and Michelangelo. And then once we finished up our tour with the Sistine Chapel, we made a last minute decision to visit St. Peter's Cathedral. It's at the end of this massive square and the cathedral itself is just so elaborate and beautiful. And as it got towards the evening, we took the metro back towards our Airbnb and wrapped up our day with dinner by the Colosseum. And the food here was actually pretty surprisingly good, but definitely what stole the show was being able to eat with a view of the Colosseum all lit up in the background. Okay, so it is Tuesday morning. We are just getting ready to check out of our Airbnb now. Today it is a travel day, so I'm dressed all kinds of comfy because we're going to go to Florence today. Really excited for that. I think we've got a couple of hours before we need to leave on our flight, but we need to check out of the Airbnb right now. So we're just gonna wander around Rome for a few hours with our suitcases. It's going to be fine. But before we go, I wanted to share a little Airbnb tour with you guys. So let me show you guys where we've been staying. Also, Brooklyn, we see you. <laughs> but this is where we've been staying. Okay, so our Airbnb is a really cute loft. So coming in through the door right here, you just have a little living room area. I love the fact that this place has just these amazing windows. We're on the sixth floor here, so you can see out in so many different directions. And then coming over here, there's a little dining area, and this is really cute. Our Airbnb host has this little board where he kind of lets everyone draw something on it. Christopher did the creation of Adam right here. That was his contribution. There's just these little pastels you can use. So such a fun touch and it's really cute. Then through here you have the kitchen. There's like a little bathroom in here, a little kitchen area and just a really cute little balcony as well. So cool. Just love the view in every direction. And then up here, we have the stairs that go up to two different bedroom lofts. So through one, there's a bedroom here. And then also a bedroom in here. You can turn on the light so you can see. It's not like super fancy by any means, but does the job. And then finally, you just come through to the bathroom. Okay, coming back down the stairs again. That's where we've been staying in Rome though. It's been a really lovely place to stay, but now it's time to head on to Florence, so let's go. Oh, actually, I forgot to show you guys the coolest part of the entire Airbnb. There's another flight of steps outside of the apartment that takes you up to the rooftop, and it is so, so cool, the view from up here. Let me show you guys. And after checking out of our Airbnb, we just chilled for a few hours at a little cafe nearby before walking to the train station and catching our train to Florence. So we just made it to our Airbnb in Florence and it is really, really nice. Honestly, I think this is one of the best Airbnbs that we've stayed at ever. It's gorgeous here. Like the moment we walked through the door, I told Christopher that I want to redo our house to look a little bit more like this place. I am a big fan of how 
they've just got it all set up and laid out. It's really cute. But yeah, we arrived in Florence. Everything went well with the train and now we are headed to Piazza Michelangelo. I believe is what it's called. It's a really pretty park just outside of Florence where apparently you have a gorgeous view of the sunset and the city of Florence. So I think that that's going to be a fun little way to get an introduction to the city of Florence. I think we're also planning to stop for some gelato on the way too. So it's going to be a really fun, chill and relaxed evening. It's like 4.30 right now. So we've got a few hours before the sunset. So we're just going to have a nice, enjoyable, relaxing evening. And then we've got a bunch of Florence sights and things that we want to see tomorrow. So it's going to be a good one. Now though, we are off to get some gelato and watch the sunset. This really ended up being one of our favorite nights from the entire trip. We got some gelato along the way and a bottle of wine to share once we were there, but it was just an absolutely stunning sunset with the most incredible view of the city. Just sitting up there and enjoying the views, Florence quickly stole my heart. But after the sunset, we started walking back and along the way stopped at this little artist shop. You guys know how much I love watercolors. I had to take one home with me. Then we ate dinner at this amazing little restaurant called Cavernetta della Signoria. We ordered lamb and steak and Christopher said it was his favorite meal ever. And I have to say, I think I agree with him. Okay, it is Wednesday morning now and we are on our way out the door. Our plan for today is to see the Statue of David and the Academia Gallery. And then later on, we're going to be hiking the Duomo and just wandering around the streets of Florence, I think. So it's going to be another fun day. We need to head out of the door pretty fast though because we're running just a little bit late. Uh, and we need to grab breakfast on our way to see the Statue of David. So it's going to be fun, let's go. And seeing the Statue of David in person was another one of those wow moments. I can remember studying art history growing up and learning about the statues. So seeing it in person was again, just amazing. And after seeing the Statue of David, Christopher mentioned that he really wanted to see the Uffizi Gallery. So even though it wasn't in our original plan, we decided to squeeze that in before visiting the Duomo. Just finished up our trip to the Uffizi Gallery. We didn't originally plan on doing it today, but we just like snuck it in because we had time between seeing the Statue of David and climbing the Florence Cathedral. And it was super worth it. Uh, yeah, it was really weird. At one point the like lights went off and there was like a siren. I don't know what was going on, but super cool. We had to go pretty fast through it, but I feel like we got to see all the big stuff. So. Michelangelo. Yeah. Raphael, uh, some Da Vinci. Most important, I think Raphael, Raphael. might be my favorite. Yeah. Really like now we are on our way to the Florence Cathedral, which is like a five minute walk away. Gonna meet back up with our friends there because they decided to do their own stuff for a couple of hours. And yeah, now it's time to hike up the Florence Cathedral. And after getting a couple snacks to fuel us as we hiked up the cathedral, we headed towards the back entrance, which is the line for hiking up the Duomo. It was really cool getting to see the inside of the cathedral, but then after a few minutes, we started the long hike up to the top. And there were a couple overlooks and places to stop, but mostly it was a lot of walking up some very narrow flights of stairs. We made it to the top of the Duomo and the views from up here are just absolutely amazing. Just honestly, all of Florence is so breathtakingly stunning. So we're just going to spend a few minutes enjoying the views, taking them in. Then I think we're off to find a good place to watch the sunset and to grab dinner. Once we finally made it down the stairs and to the bottom of the Florence Cathedral, we started walking towards Palazzo Vecchio. 
and the spot was literally steps away from our Airbnb, so we enjoyed spending quite a bit of time here while we were in Florence. And by this point, we were all feeling a bit hungry, but our dinner reservation wasn't until later, so we decided to stop for a meat and cheese board. We didn't want to get anything too big, just enough to tide us over, so sharing this really ended up being perfect. And afterwards, we made our way to Ponte Vecchio to watch the sunset. And Christopher was pretty tired, so he took a quick nap, but it was a really beautiful place just to relax and watch the sunset. And then after Christopher got up, we walked around a bit and explored. And then at eight, we made our way over to La Fintunta for our Florentine steak dinner. And that was delicious, but easily the most special part of our evening came as we were walking back to our Airbnb. We stumbled across this guy playing guitar in the square and it was just so beautiful and romantic and everything that I think of when I think of Italy. So we just stopped to listen and enjoy probably for an hour. Well, it's the next morning and it is another beautiful day here in Italy. Today, we rented a car and so we're outside of Florence and our plan for today is basically just to drive through Tuscany, which honestly, we've done about an hour's drive already and it is so incredibly gorgeous, just breathtakingly beautiful. All of the fall colors are out right now, so it was just one of the prettiest drives of my life. So our plan for today is just to explore some of the small towns throughout Tuscany and just basically like enjoy the views of this really, really gorgeous place. So really looking forward to today. We are at our first town right now. It's really unique because it has, I think it's like 13 to 20 different towers that were erected, I believe during the Renaissance or medieval ages. I'm not entirely sure. Excited to learn more about the towers, but just driving up to it was really unique. And yeah, I'm excited. First town and yeah, it's time to explore. How are we feeling today, guys? Amazing. So <laughs> this is gonna be fun. Our first stop of the day was the town of San Gimignano, and it is the cutest medieval town set in the heart of Tuscany. And so pretty much everywhere you look, it all looks like a postcard, but what I thought was really fun about this place is, I guess in medieval times, there were two rival families who were competing for power, so they built all of these tall towers across the city, and at one point there were something like 70 towers erected that were all basically just from this family feud. And today there are still over a dozen of them left, but I just thought that that was such a fun story and really makes for a really unique and beautiful skyline. But then after a few hours wandering around the town, we hopped back in the car and headed towards our next stop, the town of Siena. And Siena is another historic medieval town with this amazing public square and we decided to grab lunch at one of the restaurants on the edge of the square, and of course, we all decided to get pizza. My pizza had fresh mozzarella and prosciutto, and it was really, really good. And then after lunch, we made our way over to the Siena Cathedral, which, much like the Florence Cathedral, is just incredibly colorful and ornate. Then afterwards, we hopped back in the car and started making our way towards our final stop of the day, Pienza. And honestly, this drive was so beautiful that we hardly even noticed time passing. It was like every single corner we turned took us to a new breathtaking landscape. But then finally, we made it to the town of Pienza just in time to watch the sunset. It was just this amazing view framed by the mountains in the distance and like all of the sunsets that we saw while in Tuscany, it was incredible. Hi 
had another early morning this morning, but we just made it onto our train to Venice. I think it's about a two hour train ride and then we'll be spending the day in the city. We checked out of our Florence Airbnb this morning and honestly, I wish I had time to share with you guys like a video or pictures of where we stayed because it was one of my favorite Airbnbs. Hi, Christopher. <laughs> um, but it was one of my favorite Airbnbs that we've ever stayed in. Our host was super friendly, gave us some great recommendations and the actual Airbnb itself was so beautiful. It was right in the heart of the city and so everything was just so walkable. It was like we basically opened the door and we're in the heart of the city, which was really cool. Uh, checked out this morning though and now we're on our way to Venice. So. We've got one day in Venice today, and then tomorrow we're planning to go to Lago di Garda, which is a lake between Venice and Milan. And then, uh, Milan, I think I just said, Milan. Um, and we're flying out of Milan on Sunday. So, a couple days left of the trip. Really excited for Venice, and yeah, um, looking forward to the train ride. Actually, I'm looking forward to hopefully sleeping on the train ride. I did not sleep well last night, so hopefully we can fix that. Unfortunately, I was able to get a short nap on the train, but after a couple of hours, we made our way to Venice. And arriving in Venice was one of those experiences that feels right out of a storybook. Just seeing all these incredible old buildings surrounded by water. And we just spent the entire ride to our Airbnb, taking it all in. And the place we stayed was near the Rialto Bridge, and so it was really cool just being able to open up our window and see kind of all of the life on the streets. And then after getting a quick bite to eat, we went out to explore the city. And it's really cool staying in a city like Venice where the actual town itself is the experience. But eventually we made our way over to St. Mark's Square where we stopped for gelato and to see St. Mark's Cathedral. And this was one of the most unique cathedrals that I've ever seen. The entire inside of the building is actually all inlaid with gold and different mosaics. And so the whole place has this kind of glow to it as the light catches the gold. So this was really cool and it was actually only three euros a person to get in. So definitely worth it if you're ever in Venice. After we finished up at the cathedral though, we started heading back towards the Rialto Bridge for our gondola ride. Just got on our gondola ride. Oh, it's so pretty. And I feel like this is the quintessential thing to do while you're in Venice, but since it was our first time here, we didn't want to leave the city without experiencing a gondola ride. And we ended up going just as the sun was setting, which ended up being perfect because not only did we get to experience Venice at sunset, but also it was dark by the end of our gondola ride. So we kind of got to experience two sides of Venice. And something about the way that the light reflects off the water here really is magical. Then afterwards, Christopher and I finished up our time in Venice with a date night. I had a phenomenal lobster pasta. And then the next morning, we said goodbye to Venice and started wrapping up our trip. So that's it, that was our trip to Italy and I hope you guys enjoyed coming along for it. As always though, don't forget to give this video a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you haven't already. I hope you guys have an amazing day though. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.